What's up you guys, Shardimus Prime here, doing another movie review on X-Men Apocalypse. Just watched the movie last night in the 2D at the Tan Fran Theater over in San Bruno. Watched it with my wife, the lovely Charlita One, friend Rodine, and then my wife's friend uh, slash co-worker Nadine. So the four of us watched the movie, and I'm going to give a non-spoiler review first, and then go into the spoiler section. Did my voice just crack? The movie was alright, you know, it was cool. I, I can't say I really hated it, definitely didn't hate it, definitely didn't love it. It was alright. Uh, for me, the highlight was the visual effects. I thought the visuals were pretty spectacular. Not disappointing in any way at all as far as the visuals go. But what did bother me a little bit was I felt like the story was a little on the thin side. And there was a part of the movie that I felt dragged a little bit. Like, the movie was two, what, two hours and 23 minutes long. I honestly felt like it was a three hour movie. Now, keep in mind, I saw the movie at 10.30 and I'd, got, and I'd gone to the movie straight after work. So it was kind of a long day yesterday. I was a little bit tired, but at the same time, I don't usually go to bed till like 1 or 2 anyway, so you know, it did feel like it was a long movie. Um, Oscar Isaac as Apocalypse, I think I think he's a great actor. I think he did a good job as far as acting goes, but as, as far as his facial features and his look as Apocalypse, I just didn't really like it. I like the way they designed the suit and all that, but I just never really got used to him being Apocalypse or, or just that face being Apocalypse, I, I just didn't really ever buy it. And I wasn't sold on it before I saw the movie, and I just really wasn't totally sold on the face of Apocalypse. But the acting was good, though. You know, I didn't think he was a bad Apocalypse. And I liked, for the most part, I really did like Apocalypse during the movie. What I didn't like so much was the Horsemen. I thought the four Horsemen were probably the weakest part of this movie. I don't know. Uh, but the best part of the movie, aside from the effects and everything, was I really liked the X-Men. So I thought the X-Men were great. I really liked the X-Men a lot. I'll get into more detail with that in the spoiler section. Um, I thought Magneto and Professor X were really cool. Uh, Nightcrawler, Beast, Cyclops, Gene, Quicksilver, all very cool. One thing I thought that was worth noting is that for Metallica fans out there, you're really going to like this movie, okay? You're going to enjoy it. Alright, and then, uh, then the last thing is I want to say that I did think Days of Future Past was better. I think I liked it more than First Class, though. Now on to the spoilers! Oh my god, Jubilee was so awesome! Jubilee didn't do jack squat! What the hell, man? That, I guess that's my biggest complaint. We didn't get any Jubilee action. She was there, but damn it, man. Lana Condor. Man, check her out. Google her. And she is fine. Lana Condor sin condom. You know what I mean? The horsemen, kind of weak. Uh, I just felt like their motive wasn't really strong enough to really carry them into the movie and follow Apocalypse along on this venture of wiping out the entire human race. Because basically, and this is how I took it, is that his offer was, hey, I'm going to amp your powers up, right? You're going to be so much more badass than you ever thought you would be, okay? In exchange for that, I need you to help me wipe out every single bastard on this planet. What? What kind of stupid deal is that? That's like somebody telling me, like, okay, I'm going to give you awesome drumming powers. You're going to have the double kick powers of Virgil Donati. You're going to have the six note patterns of Buddy Rich. You're going to have all the drumming skills that you ever wanted. But I'm going to kill everybody else. Like, what? So no, no one's going to ever hear me drum? Like, what, what the hell is a power? I mean, what the hell? Uh, I just thought that was a bad motive. And for a lot of the time, I mean, I felt like the horsemen did a whole lot of nothing. When he recruited the four horsemen, that part was cool, and then when they fight at the end, that's that was kind of cool, but in between, they're just standing around doing nothing. Psylocke had no backstory at all. What, she's Caliban's henchman, and she's just there, and then that's it. Uh, but yeah, the, and, and they stand around a lot. Like, there's just them standing in the desert while Apocalypse is, you know, doing his world destroying and whatnot, and then they're, you know, well, everybody just strike a pose, like everybody just stand there, like, okay, cool. Like, if I was one of those guys, I'd be like, uh, can I go do something else? Like, I got, like, some action figures I kind of want to go play with, or just do something else, please. There, there's a space in the movie where it just kind of, like, I feel like the whole movie just comes to a halt. Felt like the movie hit a brick wall. Like, you have the thing with Magneto happening, which was great. I love the Magneto portion of the movie, which I'll touch on more in a second. And then you have them recruiting the four horsemen, and then you have the battle at the end. And I felt like between recruiting the four horsemen and the battle at the end, I guess they, they gathered up the X-Men in between them too, but 
I felt like a whole lot of nothing happened there. And, and like I said earlier, like the movie is 223 and it felt like 3. The Magneto storyline was so cool. I just absolutely loved the whole concept of him trying to, you know, uh, uh, assimilate and, and live his life and he had his family and everything and it just gets torn to bits with that one arrow which got them both. Very much reminded me of The Walking Dead comic book. If you're a Walking Dead comic fan, you know what I'm talking about. And I thought it was just awesome how he just immediately just slayed all those dudes with that necklace. That was awesome. Actually, I thought Magneto was pretty awesome throughout the entire film. Seeing him hovering in the air with all the metal and everything going around him, I thought that was sick as hell. I thought it was kind of funny how Mystique, <laughs> what was it, Mystique and Beast are just chilling off to the side, and they're just right there, and, and Magneto's just doing his hovering thing, and they're like, uh, uh, Eric, hey, hey Eric, wait, wait. Hi, Eric. Like, oh, 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 hey, Mystique. Like, I was like, whoa, what the hell? And speaking of which, Mystique, I don't know. I mean, I think Jennifer Lawrence is a good actress and everything. I don't think she did any bad acting, but I don't like how they're writing the character. And maybe I missed something, but the way this movie ends is Mystique is the leader of the X-Men. She's giving the whole speech and everything, and I'm like, what? Like, you're the... But don't you side with Eric, like, in X-Men 1? Like, aren't you guys... like? Like, cause the way it came off in X Men One was like they're like this, like for a long time. So now all of a sudden, so now you switch back. She didn't do any fighting in the blue. Like she didn't. Like she didn't do any of the ass whooping that we saw in Days of Future Past, which was some of the coolest parts of that movie. I thought I love that part, especially with the piernas in the air and all that stuff. You know, so we got no flying blue piernas. I wish we'd gotten that, but oh well. And and when she did turn blue, most of the time she had a suit on or something, so you just see it's just, I'm like, okay, I get it, Jennifer Lawrence, you don't like putting on the makeup, okay? You're spoiled. Now what? I don't know what rewards you want or whatever, but I don't care about that. I'm a comic book fan. I want to see the mystique. But no, you're too lazy, and what, and what I mean by too lazy is you don't want to sit there for five hours a day, you know, putting on makeup at 3 a.m. in the morning and everything. But... That's what actors do to be in movies, man. That's like the job, right? Just because you're more successful, does it mean that you're supposed to do less? Now, what I really liked a lot, though, was the X-Men. I thought the X-Men were great. I thought Beast was awesome. I really love watching Beast. I like the new Cyclops. The new Cyclops kid was great. I love how strong that optic blast is. Just blew through that, that Xavier tree, that family tree that they had. They just split right down the middle. I thought that was great. It was like a nice Cyclops origin story. I felt like we kind of got, uh, you know, for us Cyclops fans, felt like they kind of made up for like how they did us wrong with the other Cyclops, you know what I mean, and the other versions of the movie. And then uh, I want to say that I also really liked the new Jean Grey. I thought the new Jean Grey was really cool too. You gotta love Nightcrawler, man. Nightcrawler was awesome. I think we had some high expectations with the Quicksilver that we got from Days of Future Past, and they really took it up a notch in this movie with the Quicksilver. So much to the point where I really think Think he was moving faster than the speed of light. I mean, that was ridiculous, man. He was going... I, dude, he emptied out the whole school in the span of an explosion? I mean, explosions are fast. He even had time to sip at the soda a little bit, you know, and, and make a net out of the blankets and then throw the kid... I mean, that was... I thought it was really cool, but I... Pretty sure he was moving faster than the speed of light, which is, you know, physically impossible. But my favorite part of the movie, oh my god, and spoilers big time over here, fucking Weapon X! Ah, that was so sick with the claw, oh man! That was, I think that was the best Wolverine we'd ever seen, man! I loved it, oh man, he shredded those bastards up! That was, it's like we've all been wanting to see that for so long. He's in the cage, and you hear him growling and stuff like a manimal, and then he comes out of there, and oh, he's got the headgear on, looking straight out of the comics. I mean, could have had more hair, but still, he looked fantastic, man. He was just tearing it up. Oh, that was badass. Now, Rodine brought up the point, well, wait, how come in the flashbacks you don't see any of the other X-Men there, and it kind of doesn't really add up all the way? Yeah, all right, yeah, it kind of makes sense. And I do like how they tied everything in. One thing I really, really like is that Singer's doing a great job of making this X-Men universe between these six X-Men movies, plus two Wolverine movies, plus one Deadpool movie, even though the Deadpool movie didn't really have anything to do with any of this. But he's, he's making it 
tie in together, you know, and I, and I thought that was pretty cool, especially having a striker and everything, you know, I, I, I like that, I like that part of the movie, it really makes it feel complete, that's one of the things that really made me enjoy the movie, but damn, oh, the Weapon X was sick, but then there's a part where he runs off into the snowy snow, and it kind of reminds you of, <laughs> of, of Wolverine Origins, you know, when you have the nudist Hugh Jackman running through, hopping over a fence and everything. It kind of reminded me of that, because, like, when he ran out of there, wife and I just both laughed. Like, it was just kind of funny to see him. <laughs> go, go eat the wolves or whatever. Um, but uh, I got to say, at the end, uh, Professor X, uh, that, that mind battle thing with Professor X and Apocalypse, I thought that was really good. I thought it was great that they wrote that Gene was the one who really beats Apocalypse in this movie. And it makes so much sense. I mean, because he's essentially a god, and Gene is a goddess. So it totally makes sense that she would be really the only one that could destroy Apocalypse. And she does it so well. And it looks so cool seeing the Phoenix Flame up there and everything. That was badass. So I really liked that part of it. Um, also, I wanted to say that... Uh, that Havoc, ah shoot, yeah, Rodine brought this up, it was like, they killed Havoc off screen, and that was, that was irritating, so I, I didn't like that part of the movie, that bothered me, um, and so, you know, I, I do have my gripes about this movie, but there's a lot of things I really did truly like about it, and that's why I'm saying, it's okay, yeah, it's okay, you, you'll have fun, you know, you'll, you'll enjoy it, you, you'll like it, it's not, it's not a downer, you're not gonna, feel like you know you need your money back or anything like that but you know there there are things that and like I said it did feel long it felt longer than it really was which is not a good sign so I mean really there's a point in the movie where I was like I was like really bored uh, I was bored in the middle of the movie but um, we do get an after credit scene so stick around for after the credits uh, after the credits and spoiler Mr. Sinister. Yeah, we're getting Mr. Sinister. I guess I was the only one in the movie theater who knew what the SX core meant. You know what I mean? Or was it X SX Incorporated or whatever. But as soon as I saw SX, I was like, Ooh, Mr. Sinister, oh my god. And everybody else was like, oh, what, what? Even though I feel like Mr. Sinister is a step backwards, it would have been better, really, if they started with Mr. Sinister first. I mean, imagine how cool it would have been if we'd gotten Mr. Sinister first and then Apocalypse later, right? I mean, that would have been a really cool build-up. But, uh, in the comics, remind me, I mean, I do think Sinister is the one that brings Apocalypse back. I could be wrong about that, but I think in the comics the order was is that it was Mr. Sinister, and then Apocalypse. But then I also felt like Apocalypse had something to do with uh, Mr. Sinister gaining all of his powers, too. So, uh, it's been a while since uh, I've delved into that story, so I have to, yeah, and, Remind me, alright? Leave a comment. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the movie if you'd seen it. Let me know if you're excited to see the movie. And I will catch you guys later. Peace!